Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Once again, this is not a cast. This is my thoughts on life. So if you're not interested in that kind of thing, by all means, pick another video on the channel. But if you're looking for a cast with commentary, this is not the game for you. If you choose to continue, thanks for watching, and we'll talk about some stuff. So, basically... I've said before, I've had some points in my life where I have struggled a little bit with depression. And this past week, and I got to thinking about it, and I wonder about a lot of stuff. And actually, my wife and I have discussions about this a lot of times as far as it seems like over the course of history, um, there has not been a lot of mention of specific mental disorders. And I know a lot of that is... Um, just lack of knowledge on the subject, but like you don't hear about huge numbers of people even a hundred years ago or, or 150 years ago when fairly decent records were being kept medically. Um, you don't hear about lots of cases of depression or um, specifically diagnosed cases of different mental disorders, that kind of thing. Although you did have a lot of people that ended up in the insane asylum. So there is that. But anyway, um, Basically, I was wondering, why does it seem like, especially in recent years, depression is not only a more often medically diagnosed phenomenon, but also something that seems to affect a lot of people on a daily basis. And, you know, it is varying degrees. I will not, um, I, I'm not going to try to say, oh, depression is something that's completely preventable and everybody just needs to get over it. Because there are medical cases where, you know, you have a chemical imbalance in your brain and it is, you are depressed. There is no other way to get around it. And um, then, you know, there's other people who just don't take care of themselves and through life circumstances they get depressed and that kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's difficult to determine who actually has a medical issue and who needs psychiatric help. But I have a theory about it. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this. In the last, I don't know, 75 years especially, but even the last 150 years, we have gone from, as a society, the majority of people being or, or living what you would say is a subsistence living to people having a designated specialty job working 40 hours a week and having tons of free time. And, you know, basically what I'm saying is that long ago people didn't have time to sit and think. You got up, you worked, a lot of times it was on a farm um, or in some kind of industry job. You would do your work until you either it got dark or you couldn't do your work anymore. You would go home, you'd do your chores, you'd go to bed and get up and do it all over again. And up until, you know, seven, well, it's been about 100 years ago now. Um, it was a six day work week. There was no five day work week. So you didn't even have that free day. It was six work days and Sunday. And, um, so it, it shifted from that where everybody was really busy to now you have four or five hours of free time in the evenings. Now, gar granted, there's a lot of things to fill your time with in that regard, but you know, a, a lot of free time. And then you have an entire day on Saturday where, yeah, you may be working around the house and doing stuff, but you're going to have a lot of free time and then Sunday. So two days for your weekend. Um, and part of me wants to think that because of the amount of free time that we have as a society, a lot of people tend to sit back, relax, have time to think, have time to meditate and just kind of be consumed by what their life is. And they can't stay busy. And that may be what's contributing somewhat to the rates of depression. And I say that pulling specifically from my personal experience because my worst times tend to be on weekends because I can stay busy during the week. I can do my job. I can come home. I do casts. I stay involved in a lot of things. And so I don't really have loads of free time. I'll maybe have an hour here and there and I can usually play a game and keep myself busy. And then my wife's also made the observation that I don't give myself time to think. I stay occupied. I'm reading something. I am playing a game on my phone. I am um, browsing YouTube. I'm doing something all the time and not giving myself time to think. And then when the weekend comes around and I have all of my extra free time, 
Um, a lot of times, if I don't have activities planned, my attitude and my thoughts go downhill very quickly to the point that by the time I hit Saturday afternoon, sometimes I am a mental wreck. And, uh, you know, that I had not exactly put that pattern together until relatively recently. And it, it's just kind of an interesting thing to think about because basically free time equals depression. For me, anyway. It may not be the same for everybody else, but maybe that's a... That could be a sign of not wanting to think about things, and it could be a sign of not being able to think about things. So, take it how you will. But, anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. It's not a super cohesive thought, but it's just something that I had noticed and something that seems to line up with a lot of things. Just all in all, having an inordinate amount of time to think about life and what it means kind of doesn't do a whole lot of good for your psyche. So, um, there was one other thing that I was going to point out about that, but it seems to have slipped my mind. Oh, yes. Something that uh, Bell said this past week really piqued my interest. And I think she had a good point. Um, basically, fighting off thoughts with truth. Because my method... I have a naturally happy disposition and I can laugh off a lot of things. I'm sure you guys have noticed this. My natural reaction to just about everything is to laugh and make light of it. And that works in a lot of cases. But essentially, I never deal with actual issues. I just find something else to focus on and bury it and ignore it essentially and it never actually speaks to the problem it just kind of continually piles up and then comes back and visits me at a later date and it's astounding sometimes how similarly my wife and I think in the same trails that we run just I don't know why it is. We're very similar in that regard. And she does have occasional downtimes. Not not like I do. Not as frequently. But she, her policy is to fight back with truth in thought. And that is if you're having thoughts about, you know, there's nobody. I have no friends. I have no life. I am a failure. I, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Um, instead of ignoring it and distracting yourself you go back and say no I have these specific friends that do care about me and I have this specific thing that is important to me and that matters in life and I need to focus on that and instead of staying in that mindset and I, I don't use the word lightly but basically moaning about what's going on you focus on something good you make it a point to dispel those doubts and fears with the knowledge that yes I, I do have something to live for and there are good things in my life and that seems to do a lot better job of helping with those moods and times than just ignoring it and that's something that I really want to start working on in the future is actually talking through stuff and thinking about it and addressing the root issue rather than just burying it so anywho that's pretty much my thoughts for today I just wanted to share that with you guys it, it it's interesting when you actually sit down and think out a or, or speak out a train of thought because thoughts tend to be muddled you hop and skip and jump around and you don't really know where you're headed but when you're forced to sit down with someone else or in this case with you guys sit down and talk and share essentially to a microphone but I love the feedback from you guys so I feel like I'm talking to everyone at the same time um, if you sit down and actually share your thoughts and think it out logically it can make a lot of difference in the mindset with which you approach certain things so I would encourage you guys to you know, if you do struggle with things from time to time or if you have doubts about things or if you if you just struggle with certain trains of thought definitely find someone even if it's a family member you'd be surprised how close family can be even if you don't think they are um, 
find someone to tell it to or to write out your thoughts, something, get it down, get it recorded, get it heard. And I'm sure that it'll help you. Even if you don't get feedback from the other person, um, it will make a difference in how you think because it will force you to come to terms with what you're thinking. All right. I think that about wraps it up. And that wraps up that game. That was a quick one. I saw this on Tag Craftius Maximus, and I kind of like this map. I don't play it very well because it's a difficult one to play, but I saw it, and it was a 16 and a 900 versus a 12 and 13, and I had to see how that came out, so I clicked on it. And it's a rare thing to see a 900 basically smoke a 1200. So, But he did it. Very good job to those guys, left-hand team. Alrighty guys, as always, thank you so much for watching these videos. I would greatly appreciate your feedback in the comments, thoughts, and uh, just anything you want to say on the topic. And as always, well, I said it already, but I'll say it again. Thanks for watching and thanks for the time that you invest into this channel. It, it is a huge, huge deal to me, even if sometimes I don't get back to every single one of you. Alrighty guys, I will see you in the cast on Thursday. Adios.